In this video, I'd like for you to understand how the concept of intermolecular forces or intermolecular attractions can be used to predict and understand why molecules dissolve other molecules or predict solubility between the molecules. Two statements to keep in mind. First, like polarities dissolve like polarities. This means polar molecules will dissolve other polar molecules. And nonpolar molecules will dissolve nonpolar molecules. The first cartoon shows water molecules dissolving with other water molecules. Notice how the opposite ends of the water molecule dipoles are attracted to each other. The negative is attracted to the positive, etc. The second cartoon shows methanol molecules dissolving other methanol molecules. We can see here also the polar part of the molecule, which is the OH, the oxygen is attracted to the hydrogen of another molecule. Opposite ends of the dipole attracted to other opposite ends. The third cartoon shows water molecules dissolving with methanol molecules. Again, we see opposite ends of dipoles being attracted to opposite ends of dipoles and other molecules. The other statement to keep in mind is unlike polarities do not dissolve unlike polarities. This means that a polar molecule will not dissolve a nonpolar molecule. A common example is oil and water. Water, as we know, is very polar. Therefore, oil is very nonpolar. The molecular structure of oil is not shown here. Water does not dissolve with oil because there is no dipole set up on the oil molecule, nor can a dipole be induced that would be large enough for water to latch onto. This cartoon shows how soap cleans. A soap molecule can be thought of as a small piece of string. One end of the molecule is ionic. The rest of the molecule to the other end is nonpolar. The ionic end is called the hydrophilic polar head, and the rest of the molecule is called the hydrophobic nonpolar tail. Now we can see the structure of the ion, and the structure of the nonpolar tail is a hydrocarbon, which is carbon singly bonded to one another and singly bonded to hydrogens to form this chain, which is very nonpolar. Soap molecules are thought to aggregate in small micelles, shown here. Micelles are small clusters of so, molecules where the nonpolar tails are oriented towards the center and the ionic end of the water molecule is pointing out towards the water. And from what we know about molecular interactions so far, this would make perfect sense. Water is attracted to the ionic end and water would repel the nonpolar part of the soap molecule, just like water repels oil, or oil repels water. Next, we see how the nonpolar end of the soap molecules orient themselves around the oil stain on a fabric. Notice how the ionic end of the water molecule is not attracted to the oil. Only the nonpolar part of the soap molecule is attracted to the oil. Enough soap molecules surround the droplet of oil and carry it away from the fabric. And notice how the ionic end of the water molecules are still exposed to the water. And the nonpolar end of the soap molecule 
are directed inward, in this case, dissolving a droplet of oil. Here's a cartoon showing ethylene glycol molecules in the liquid state. Ethylene glycol is a polar molecule. It has two OH groups on uh, opposite ends of the molecule. This molecule engages in hydrogen bonding. Next, we see another cartoon of oil and water. The cartoon clearly shows just the separation between the oil molecules floating on top and below them are the water molecules.